Yes? Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you. You introduced me as an associate professor. Uh, I hope to get a promotion uh, in a few <laughs> next year sometime. I'm actually an assistant professor. Um, okay, so uh, we ready? Should we get started? Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew and this is Lila. Uh, we're here to present our assessment software. Uh, we built the software to support formative use of assessment in schools. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce my team. Uh, myself, uh, I am uh, from New Zealand and I'm an assistant professor at Nazarbayev University. I'm the lead architect of the software. Uh, my colleague in New Zealand, Dr. Chan, uh, is the lead software developer. Dr. May uh, is lead psychometrician based in China. Uh, Dr. Meisel is a contributing psychometrician from uh, Australia. Uh, sorry, from New Zealand. Uh, Dr. Rowe is a contributing psychometrician from uh, Australia. And Lila Asayeva here with me now is a contributing psychometrician and our mathematician from the Center for Pedagogical Measurement, CPM NIS. Uh, we all contributed to this software and uh, a related journal article that provides an exposition of the software. Uh, the link to the article uh, is on the web app itself which is here. Uh, I will pass you to uh, Lila. Seriously? Hello? Is this working? Anybody? We can hear you, Matthew. Okay, did you, did you, listen, you. Did you listen to my one minute introduction that I just gave or was that, yeah? Yes. Okay, fantastic. We've heard okay. everything. Okay, good. So now it's time to pass on me. <laughs> now it's time to pass on to Lila. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. So, yeah. so hello everyone. Um, the Autosite app forms five tasks. Tab one uh, checks tests for their level of validity and reliability. Tab two checks for bias questions in tests. Tab three equates two tests, for example, grade three and grade four to put different groups of students on a single scale. Tab four provides a comparison in student performance between classes of experimental groups. And finally, tab five estimates the inter-rate reliability of two raters on the same set of focal students. Uh, we have time now to play two videos about how to use the first and the second tabs. And Matthew, would you play them? Sure. Hi, my name is Matthew, and I'm going to present to you the first tab of our AutoCycle app, which is called the Unidimensional Rash tab. Unidimensional because we assume that the test administered to students was focused on a single subject area and rash because this is one of the statistical modeling approaches that we follow. So after you administer a test to a group of students, how might you use the data from the test to support student learning? Well, the purpose of this video is just that. In this video, I will demonstrate how we might make use of test data to support student learning. This is associated with formative use of assessment or assessment for learning. Basically, our purpose here is to match students with the questions and competencies that they might be ready to learn next with some assistance. For this short video, I will present data from a mathematics Лайла Бодина, вас не слышно. One, we have designed a test already. Two, we have carefully recorded and prepared the item response data in the spreadsheet. Three, we have reviewed the results of the analysis and the test and all questions function well. And four, we have created our own spreadsheet that records the names of the students and the competencies necessary to successfully complete 
each question category. Uh, let's jump to the item response data itself. Uh, as mentioned, we can see that there are 216 students and 30 questions. The app takes numeric score data only, so we will first need to copy the names of the students and place them in our own spreadsheet. Uh, we can then remove the students from the item response matrix. <clears throat> okay, uh, you can see here that I have a record for each student in the same order uh, in the first tab. Uh, these are just random names, by the way. Uh, in the second tab, I've created a list of all items, item score categories and the general competency necessary for students to complete that question. For example, multiply fraction with different denominators or convert percentage to common fractions. You will need to create and complete this entire spreadsheet yourself with reference to your own, to your own test and its questions. Before we do the analysis, we should check for variation uh, in each question. If all students get the item correct, the analysis will not work. Similarly, if all students get the item incorrect, the analysis also won't work. Assessment data and informative can actually consider such questions redundant. So we need to remove such questions for this analysis. Uh, let's jump to the analysis. We can upload the data, uh, specify the construct and the focal group. Uh, we can use standard settings to produce the report and uh, generate PDF in the spreadsheet. The analysis should be quick. Uh, with large data sets, the, the analysis takes uh, a little longer. So this produces a zip file. We open the zip file, we get a general folder. Uh, we get two outputs, one PDF report, which details the psychometric properties uh, of the test, and one Excel file. Uh, today, we're focusing on the Excel file. Uh, this is uh, specifically the first, second, and third tab we're focusing on. Uh, let's complete each of the three tabs. So you'll need to place the names uh, in the same order. In the first tab, uh, in the third tab. Uh, we also need to complete the competency for each question category in the second tab. So the second tab includes the uh, ordered item uh, thresholds. And this ranges from the simple categories to the most difficult categories at the top. Uh, we can see uh, that I've, this is what you get, the item names and step category, the threshold, and the competency for each question category you will need to enter yourself. So let's do the top one uh, ourselves. Uh, item 21.2 is recognized context involving conditional probability. from here. This is item 21, category 2. And we can finish it as the most difficult question. Uh, you'll need to enter uh, competencies for each item category, that is, four rows. To note, the third tab uh, gives us the results for each student. For formative use of assessment, we should focus on the ability estimate. As an example, we see that Kahil and Alexander both get 30 out of 40. They also get an ability estimate of uh, 0 0.72. So what type of skills 
are these students uh, ready to learn next? Let's identify questions and skills that match well with these students. Here, uh, these thresholds range between 0 0.63 and 0 0.85. So those students, those two students would likely benefit from practice in distinguishing specific fractional problems. Of course, as a school department or learning institution, uh, you might develop worksheets and activities designed to support student learning and practice in this regard. The first tab uh, includes students rank ordered. With care, you can classify students into the same developmental group. You might pair students from different color groups to support each other. Yeah. You could uh, sh even share the results of the analysis with them as part of some consultation. We hope that this demonstration was uh, useful. Uh, you might like to refer to the journal article that my team and I wrote about the more complete use of this app. Uh, the link is in the main page. Uh, you can also read the methodology in the PDF report for more details. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the video below or email me if you like. Uh, thank you for your time and all the best. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Matthew and this is Lila. Hold on, I think that's a good time. We built the software. My bad, sorry, guys. Uh, I'm asking you. Let's jump to the next video. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Lila's, Lila's video uh, to do with um, identifying bias items. Let's play. Hi, my name is Lila, and I'm going to present you a second tab in our app, which is called Manifest Slash. So this tool extends the functionality of the unidimensional rash analysis to include an examination of item bias. This form of analysis provides insight into how some questions or developmental criteria might function differently across student groups. The tool also takes an item response matrix, which is a spreadsheet of student test results. Though the tool requires that the first column specifies the binary facet of interest. For instance, column header gender. The variable needs to be numeric with code in one, representing male, for example, and two, representing female accordingly. The report includes and produces a detailed narrated technical report and organized spreadsheets that reflect the function of the test in each question, as well as a report on item bias. I'm going to show you an example of the data that the tab takes. Here it is. So the first column is the facet of interest or a student grouping variable. It could be anything, but in this case, it is named female. Therefore, as a rule, females are coded as two and males as one. So, as you can see, there were 1,000 students in the test. Some of them were males and some of them were females, obviously. And uh, the second column, so it's passing from the, uh, from the second column till the end uh, uh, is the item response matrix for the test results for each student, where ones stand for the correct responses and zeros for the incorrect responses. So we can see that there were 10 items in the test. So 1,000 students give their responses to 10 items. So as for the settings, we should use the same settings as for the first tab, which is called unidimensional rash. Let's go to our second tab. And um, yeah, so here we can specify a topic for, for example, algebra and the focal group, which could be grade seven students. 
this certain should be the same as for the previous tab. And in addition, there is the option for flagging BIOS items. This is at step six. To flag possible BIOS items, we need to set a threshold. If the difference is 0 0.5 or more, the item is flagged. Also, we can set the level of statistical significance. This is commonly set to 0.05 or less. And then we can run the report. Here, how it looks like. So first of all, a zip file is produced, and then we can inspect it. It will find a description of the general methodology and mathematical model in section 3.4.11. Here it is. And the results themselves are presented in appendix A8, which is on page 52. Yeah. Okay. So we can focus on the bottom half of the table. We can see one result that is both red, statistically significant, and blue, practically significant. This is question I0006. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can see that being female is associated with an easier item difficulty. We can therefore inspect the item, perhaps present it to colleagues and consider how it may advantage female students or vice versa disadvantage male students. This information may inform possible improvements to the way that questions are formatted and presented to students in the future. Thank you for your attention. Okay, that brings us to an end, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions? Uh, hey, friends, stand. it's the Visual Studio 2022 launch. We're still here, we're working remotely. Thousands of you have downloaded the preview oh, of Visual sorry. Studio 2022, but today YouTube, we're going to- YouTube ad, my bad. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you very much, Matthew and Lila, for the presentation of such a very practically important uh, application. And I do understand that this is not the, whole application itself, but only part of that. And I am sure that if we have some time, it will, like, we can uh, see the importance of it for all of the participants. Um, as for now in the chat, I see that some of the people are already interested in um, using the application in uh, nearest future. So I think the, uh, the very first question that bear in my mind is, is it um, accessible in any of like um, in App Store or Play Market or in any other way? Uh, it's simply a website. Um, so the website itself uh, is, um, I think it's, I can share it in the chat if you like, but it's a website uh, and, and anyone can access it. It's uh, <clears throat> free of charge to access, anyone can access it and the entire architecture, everything is all open source. So do with it what you like. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that will be very helpful to most of the teachers and uh, educators in any like uh, level of uh, education. Uh, so- uh, It's in the chat now, the link uh, to the website's in the chat. That's like the base bill uh, associated with our publication. Yes, we'll make sure that everyone gets that uh, link so they can uh, download the app and use oh, it. The, for... the app is web-based, so it's a web app. So there's no need to download anything. It all op operates in the cloud. So as long as you have an internet connection, you have the software available to you. Um, we may create a, a downloadable version, um, but that's, we're looking at that for the future. Okay, to, the to be future. honest, we would prefer to keep it just as web-based to make it like ubiquitous yeah. to everyone. There's some technical things that you have to consider if you download. Uh, so we prefer web-based, mm -hmm. uh, open access, open source software. Thank you. Okay, I think that will be very, yes, good for everyone to use that and to see the app. And uh, uh, I hope that there are some instructions for them to use because it was uh, quite technical stuff you showed. 
uh, not all of the teachers will be like ready to use that from the first uh, trial. Um, anyways, let me uh, express my gratitude to the um, presentation that you made for the video you provided today. Um, and um, as there is no more time for our section, uh, I would like to thank you both and your uh, teammates in this work uh, very much. Uh, и на данный момент я бы еще хотела поблагодарить всех участников, uh, которые сегодня слушают нашу секцию и всех спикеров за такой uh, замечательный интересный материал, который был представлен всем нашим участникам в течение сегодняшней секции. Uh, на, сейчас у вас будет перерыв на обед, после которого вы собираетесь в общем зале uh, для пленарной сессии номер два. Позвольте откланяться и завершить сегодняшнюю секцию.